What is up amigos? Today we're looking at how to use vortex theory to calculate the lift of an airfoil. And a few videos ago we went through what circulation is and I was telling you about how important it is and how we can use it for so many different things. And we're going to be using it again in this video and it's going to extend our knowledge of it. So we are looking at airfoils and here I have drawn a, an airfoil with these little rings around it. So this is the basic shape here of any airfoil, let's say, and it's an angle of attack and you have the flow coming in. Now, the thing that airfoils do is you have the flow coming in, it goes over the top and over the bottom. The flow over the top accelerates, which means that the pressure drops and a flow over the bottom, the pressure also drops a little bit, but not as much as the pressure on top usually. That results in a net uh, negative pressure on top, which then results in lift being produced. And to calculate the lift of an airfoil is actually quite difficult if you are just, if you don't really know the mathematics behind it. One way that we can do it is using vortex theory. So what does vortex theory say? Well, this picture that I've drawn here effectively illustrates this. So what we do is we get the surface of the airfoil, the closed surface, and we say, okay, on the surface going all the way around, we have constant circul we have circulation going all the way around. It's not constant, by the way, I should, shouldn't have said that. I, say, I mean, constant in the sense that there's always circulation going around, but the circulation value does change. And we denote this by this value here, gamma, small gamma s. So s is a starting point and we go around and as we go around this closed surface, the gamma is a function of this distance that we travel travel and we know what the gamma is. So for example, here it might be 10, here it might be five or whatever. If we know gamma, we can then integrate it to find out what big gamma is. So let me write this equation here, which we saw effectively in that last video. If you, if you haven't checked out that video on circulation, check that out because this will be more clear. And we have big gamma, which is the total circulation of this airfoil equals the integral around this surface around this closed uh, loop here, of little gamma with ds. If we do that, we can find out what big gamma is. And from that other video, we now know that from the kutler joukowsky theorem, that we can then calculate the lift per unit span as rho infinity v infinity gamma. So by knowing what the circulation is around this airfoil, we can then calculate what the entire circulation is and then the lift of this airfoil. Now you might be thinking to yourself, why would we say that there is even this circulation around an airfoil? How does this make sense? Is there even circulation? That comes into the real life validity of this idea. And the answer is surprisingly, yes. This actually has a lot of real world application and it makes sense in real life because let's say we have any surface, not even an airfoil, just a regular flat surface. We have the flow coming across here and then it makes a familiar boundary layer. And if you don't know the boundary layers, check out our video on that as well. Now, a boundary layer is quite interesting because let's say we have the free stream flow up here. Between the surface and the free stream flow, we have a lot of turbulence happening. We have all these different particles moving at different velocities. So they're shearing across each other. That then creates all this different turbulence, including lots of vorticity and vortices. This is actually the basis of a lot of CFD. So, in reality, we actually do have on the surface of the airfoil, a lot of vorticity and hence a lot of circulation. So over an airfoil, we have this boundary layer forming around the entire thing, and we have circulation at different points that we can calculate. So this is actually the real life uh, scenario that we can use, and it may seem funny, but once you look into the actual physics of it, we can understand, okay, there is actually circulation going around this entire airfoil surface, and we can use that to calculate what the lift of this airfoil is. And this is actually part of something called a vortex panel method. Vortex panel method. And this method is one of the earliest forms of uh, computational simulations for aerodynamics. And it dated back well before even computers became a thing back in the 60s. And it's an inviscid um, solver inherently, but you can then couple other things to it, but inherently it's inviscid. And as long as the angle attack of the airfoil is below the stall angle attack, so there's not much flow separation. A vortex panel method is actually very accurate and you can get a far more, um, you know, just as accurate simulation, but much more quickly than regular Navier-Stokes CFD by using this entire idea. If we know what the starting point is and the circulation, circulation is around the airfoil, we just calculate what the entire circulation is, pump it into the Kutler-Joukowsky theorem, get the lift for that span there. 
So that's how we use a vortex theory to calculate the lift of an airfoil. Let's quickly go through again what we covered. So airfoils, in general, we have a flow coming over it. It goes over the top and the bottom. Now, the pressure usually drops on both surfaces, but the top surface it usually drops a lot more, which results in a net pressure difference being negative, which then results in the lift being produced. Now, to determine how much lift this airfoil is producing, we can then approximate the surface as a surface with all this circulation going around it. And this is actually indicative of real life because of the boundary layer that occurs in viscous flows and the shearing between particles, which then results in a lot of vorticity and a lot of vortices and a lot of circulation forming. If we then pick any point on the airfoil and we integrate around the entire surface, the circulation as we go along, we get the big gamma, so the total circulation of this cross-section here. Putting it into the Kutta-Joukowsky theorem, we can then figure out what the lift of this airfoil is, and this is what something called vortex panel methods use, or simply just panel methods. This is a short form of this. So that's the end of this video. If you liked it, make sure to like it. If you want to see more like this, make sure to subscribe and check out those other videos that I mentioned about um, circulation and boundary layers. And also check out a textbook called Aerodynamic, uh, Fundamentals of Aerodynamics by John D. Anderson. It's linked in the description below. And I'll see you next video. Peace out, amigos.